Okay, we're going to talk about um, blend modes and specifically using JIT.op to um, blend videos and also to use different blend modes to um, create masking effects. Um, to think about blend modes, it's good to think about um, pixels or how a video is made and what, it, what, an image, what a video is. A video is basically this video down here. Um, it's a rectangle and this rectangle is made out of lots of tiny little things called pixels and those pixels have three elements um, and those elements are red, green and blue and by varying the different levels of red, green and blue you can create different colors. Um, so if we think about um, you know how we might traditionally think about mixing colors um, let's say we're working with colors and they're in the range between 0 and 1 um, I'll create say say we've got this color here um, 1.0 0, 0.0 0, 0.0 so these are representing the red green and blue values so we've got red oops mm, green blue um, what would we expect to get if we were to mix this with another color? Like, uh, let's say we mix it with um, 001. So that's um, no red, no green, all blue. We're talking about blue. We're talking about combining red and blue. Um, sort of intuitively, we know that what we get if we mix those two colors together is a uh, purple. Right, so red and blue together are purple, um, here represented by 1, 0, and 1. But what's actually going on here? What are the relationships between these two numbers? You can see that um, we've got 1, 0, and we've ended up with 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. What's actually happened is we've added these together. Right, so this is... Um, what could be considered an additive blend mode. And when we're talking about mixing various videos together, basically what your computer will do is it'll go through every single pixel, comparing pixels in each video, and then combine them in whatever way you want to combine them. Um, you could be combining them additively, like this. Um, and it stands to reason if we can... Um, combine them additively, we could subtract them. So what happens if we take red and we subtract blue? Um, here we'll end up with 1 minus 0, which is 1. Here we'll end up with 0 minus 0, which is 0. And here we'll end up with 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. Now the thing here is we're working with colors in the range between 0 and 1. So if we go negative, if we go below zero or above one, we've, we've gone past the minimum of ma or maximum. So what's going to happen is these are going to clip. If we go below zero, we're just going to get zero. If we go above one, we're just going to get one. So in this case, zero minus one ends up being zero. So here, if we take the color red and we subtract the color blue, or we mix them with a subtractive blend mode, we end up with red again. But what's interesting about um, subtractive blend modes in comparison to additive is what if we swap these around? What if we had red, or what if we had blue and we subtracted red? Well, then we get 0 minus 1, which again is negative 1, so it just ends up being 0. 0 minus 0, and 1 minus 0 is 1. So what's interesting here is when we're using a subtractive blend mode, the, the um, order of the operation is important. We'll get a different result if we subtract one layer from the other than if we swap them around. Whereas if we're adding them together, it's always going to be the same. Um, there are... Let, let's just demonstrate this before I get on to some other blend modes and how we might use them. So I'm going to bring in another video. Let's bring in something without sound. Um, this will do. And uh, now we need to blend them together. What we're going to use, what the max object that we're going to use to blend these together is the jit.op ob object. So I'm going to type n j i t dot op op j 
So jet.op stands for jet.operator, and what we're talking about with operating or uh, an operator is we're talking about that, an operator in mathematical terms. So if we have uh, a sum like 7 plus 8 equals 9, apart from the fact that that is not true, um, the point here is that this little plus sign here is the operator, and these here, the numbers either side of it, are the operands. Um, so as far as operators go, you know, you can think of all the different ones we can have. We can have plus, we can have minus, we can have divide, we can have um, uh, multiply, we can have things like minim maximum and minimum, we can do modulus, um, all sorts of stuff. But all you've got to keep in mind is this symbol in the middle is the operator, and that's what JIT op gives us um, access to all of these different operators. So JIT op quite simply takes uh, a video in its left inlet and a video in its right outlet or inlet, sorry, and it uh, combines them in some way. Um, it combines them using its operator attribute. Um, so to get access to that attribute, um, there are a few ways we can do it. We can look in the object inspector. So I'll bring up the inspector. Using, I just used Command Shift I. You can also use Command I, and you'll notice down here there's op, and I'll look over the uh, info. It gives me all uh, just a ridiculous amount of information about all the sort of things that it can do. And here's a pop-up list. These are the different operators that we have access to, but we might want access to them in our patch, right? So there are a couple of ways we can do that. We can use an attru UI object. We can either create that by hovering over the left inlet and control clicking and then picking our um, thing, our attribute that we're interested in. And this creates here an attru UI object, which if you connect it to the first inlet of any object will give you access to all of its different attributes and allow you to control them. Um, we can con create one that way by control clicking the first inlet, or we can just create a new object and say at to UI, so it's spelled like this, A-T-T-R-U-I. That creates another attribute UI. If we connect that to the first inlet and then pick a thing, we then get access to that uh, operator. Um, also note that these operators can be set as arguments using the, uh, these attributes can be set as arguments using the at symbol. If I type at, you can see it starts giving me this list of attributes that I can set, and one is op. So I can say, let's set the op to plus, right? So I can set it that way as well, which is handy if you um, are just going to have a single JIT op there and you know what blend mode you want to use, you can just uh, do that. So I'm going to uh, reconnect Oops. this to this. Now at the moment it looks exactly the same, and that is because we're using this... Um, this operator here, pass. All pass does is takes what's coming in the left inlet and passes it straight through. Completely ignores what's coming in in the right inlet. So let's pick a different blend mode. Let's pick add. So here we go. We're now using an additive blend mode. Um, so I'm just going to stop this. Let's think about what's happening here right in this sort of area. Now you can see in this little video bit here you can see I've got some different colored pixels, the sort of beigey and brown but all of this just ends up being white. And that's because the video that I'm sending in here we've got a pixel that's white so uh, say the um, second video is something like 1.0, 1.0, 1.0 and then um, the video on top of it might be sort of, uh, you know, yellow-ish, so maybe 0 0.7, 0 0.7, I'll do, sort of yellow-ish. Um, but what happens if we add these together? Well, we get 1.7, so it clips and becomes 1.0, we get 1.7, so it clips and becomes 1.0, and we get 1 plus 0, which ends up being 1.0. 1.0, 1.0, 1.0 is white. So you can see we've just added white. 
Um, where here we're sort of adding a more of a grey, you can see it just basically increases the overall brightness of the pixels in this area. So let's compare that to a subtractive blend mode. All right. So here we're taking this layer, again it's sort of this yellowish, and we're subtracting. I'm going to get rid of these, and we're subtracting this color here. Here we're subtracting white. So what happens when we subtract white? Uh, well, we're going to have 0 0.7 minus 1.0, which is like my, it goes below zero, so that's going to clip and become zero. Same thing's going to happen, 0 0.7. Minus 1.0, that's going to clip at 0 0.0, and here 0 0.0 minus 1.0 again goes below 0, so it's going to clip. So you can see if we subtract white from anything, we get black. Um, okay, but what would we expect to happen if we um, swap these layers around, right? If we took my white layer and subtracted it from my uh, video layer. Um, well, let's do the math. So 1.0 minus 0 0.7, we'd accept, expect to get 0 0.3. So already we're different. 1.0 minus 0 0.7, 0 0.3. And here 1.0 minus um, 0 is 1.0. So we get this color here, which is like blue with a little bit of red and green. So we're getting sort of a um, uh, almost pastel-y blue color. Um, let's see if that's the case. I'll uh, take this and put it here, and take this and put it here, and hit play, and uh, hit stop. So here's the sort of area that we're talking about. And you can see that's what's happened. It's sort of this bluish gray color. Um, and you'll notice here where anything was black on my top video, we're taking black and then subtracting a color from it. So um, so that's going to be black. You can't get any blacker than black. And here where we've got white and we've subtracted a color from it, what's happened is we've actually inverted the uh, layer below. So if you take white and you subtract something from it, you invert it. If you take black and you subtract from it, you just get black. Um, but it's something interesting happen has happened here as well. So we've, we've essentially sort of masked off our video here. Even though we've inverted it inside, we've masked it off, um, which is an interesting property of blend modes. And uh, there are a couple of other blend modes that we can look at where we can exploit this masking characteristic of uh, blend modes. Um, the two that are probably most useful are the minimum and maximum. Um, I'm just going to bring this back to sort of a regular thing. Um, let's go back to pass. Okay. So let's take this example again, where we've got white and we've got a sort of yellowish color. Um, I'm going to apply the maximum blend mode. So what would we happen? What would we expect to happen here? So maximum is going to look at these two numbers, and it's just going to spit back whichever is the um, highest. So it's obvious, isn't it? Here we've got white. You can't get whiter than white, so it's just going to return white. But um, what about in an area where it's black? What's going to happen there? Well, again, it's sort of an intuitive thing, right? So if you compare two numbers and one is zero, um, and assuming you can't go negative, if one is zero, then the other number is always going to be higher. Or it's going to be zero, but either way, it's going to be you know zero or higher. It's always going to be the other layer. So in this case, we'll get 0 0.7, 0 0.7, and 0 0.0, which is yellow. So everywhere it's black, we're going to get our... Um, original color coming through, and everywhere it's white, we're going to get the other color coming through. So let's see, oh, we're going to get white. So let's uh, see that in action. Max. There you go. So you can see sort of over here, where this uh, countdown video is black, it's just sending my other video through. And here where my countdown video is white, it uh, just makes it white. So this is a good way of um, creating sort of faux transparency. Um, let's go back to here. So um, 
if you've got an image that's black and white and you want to composite it against another video, you can use a maximum blend mode and everything that's white will just sit on top of the other video and you can blend them together. Uh, so let's look at, look at the minimum blend mode. Min. So what would we expect to happen here? Well, if we combine our uh, color with white, um, everything that's not white is going to show through, right? Because white is always going to be higher than the other thing. So in this case, our yellow is going to come through. And here, um, when we mix with black, um, black's always got to be the minimum. You can't get any lower than black. So black's going to come through. So what do we expect to happen? Well, we expect that anywhere that's black is going to remain black. And anywhere that's white is going to be our original video. So let's see if that's the case. Um, minimum. There you go. So you can see everywhere that's white in our um, sort of masking video is um, our original video. And everywhere that's black is black. So this is a, a way of creating dynamic masks. If you create a video that is um, black on white, you can then use that to mask out another video. So I'll, ju I'll just bring in something a bit prettier than this. Um, where's my thing? Oh. Um, here we go. There's a video. So this video is white birds on a black background. And you can see, you might be able to see me, I'm actually in here somewhere. You can see that behind, <laughs> um, yep, well I'm behind the birds. And you can see that basically the birds are taking on the colour of the video behind. So if we were to use something a bit more exciting as the, uh, as the other video, let's get something um, colourful. This is relatively colourful. Random internet video. Oh. You can see now see that the birds are taking on the colour of the uh, of the other video. So the, so minimum blend modes can be very effective in this way. And let's uh, let's just compare it to the maximum blend mode. So now with the maximum blend mode, the white the birds are white, so they're going to pop out on top of whatever the other video is. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Have a play with JIT.op, um, all sorts of things you can do. I've glossed over a whole bunch of stuff, but um, this should be enough to get you started. Messing with blend, blend modes, combining videos, doing fun stuff. Cool.